something, so I'm having a hard time singing, y'all. Help me out. Dave, that's what I like. I like somebody that just will take up what needs to be done and do it, even if they have never done it. That's Dave. Yeah. He will de definitely witness to people on it without any hesitation. He'll tell everybody they're going to hell if they don't. That's the truth. That's the truth. Know that song, Did you used to do that in heavy metal? <laughs> I didn't know what heaven and hell was. Then. You didn't know what heaven and hell was. That's right. Except for the Black Sabbath song. Except for the Black Sabbath. <laughs> See, I didn't know all those lines were in those songs. You're always telling me about some heavy metal group and they're talking about. Hell is eternity, hell is your destiny. That's that's unbelievable. I didn't know they sang those songs. 
they ought to have to take them in churches it's for concerts and tell a bunch of Baptists that hell is your destiny. Hell is eternity. Hell is your destiny. Yeah, the Baptists don't hear that, do they? I don't think the Baptists want to hear much of anything hard. Not the churches I was in. I used to travel in Baptist churches all over America. But I was pulling punches back then. I wasn't letting go. That makes you know the reality. When you're on TV, when you're on TV 18 hours a week in Nashville, and you don't hardly get any response, reality sets in. You're going, oh, man. And it's not just predestination they don't like. And it's not just Christmas they don't like. They don't like daily cross, being hated by the world. That's a requirement. A cross is a requirement. They don't like that that's, you have to be hated to go to heaven. Huh? You and Betty figured it out. <laughs> Mary said, they're all zombies. They're dead and don't know it. I think that's true. I talk to people about truth all the time. And I'll say something that's uncomfortable to, to Christians in this world, and they change the subject pretty quick. I just, I, you don't have to talk about Christmas being pagan or you don't have to talk about predestination or God doesn't love everybody. Just talk about the Bible, about some serious things. When you're witnessing, don't tell people what they need to do. Tell people what God had to do to you to cause you to think correctly. That's what, that's the best way to talk to somebody. Say, yes, I used to live wrong. And God dealt with my heart. That's what I tell people. And they'll know that when you're saying God dealt with your heart, that means he has to deal with theirs. Just tell them what God has done in your life. I just say, I used to be a heathen because you did, didn't you? Yeah, huh? my mama told me I was. <laughs> did you tell her that? <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> we were all heathens at one time. Because you have to be a self-admitted, self-confessed, bona fide sinner for Jesus to save. You can't just come and say, I'm a pretty good guy, Jesus. Will you save me? No. It don't work that way. All right. Let me get my... Now, the first thing we always do, we always read some of our emails from around the world and around America. I can't read them all. But I read some of them. I've got a whole bunch I've had to take home. We're on TV about 18 hours a week in Nashville. And uh, we're on the TV about 200 different towns and cities from all over New York, uh, Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, Staten Island, the Bronx. We're on in, uh, all up and down the East Coast, Philadelphia, Boston. Uh, besides New York, uh, Washington, D.C., Charleston, South Carolina. I have to think of them going down the eastern seaboard, down in Miami. Then I come back up to Georgia, Atlanta, Roanoke, Virginia, uh, Dayton, Ohio, Chicago, Illinois. We're on out in all over Kansas. One station puts us all over Kansas. Of course, Kansas is mostly prairie, so <laughs> it's understandable. And then we're out on out in Los Angeles and up in in uh, up in uh, Seattle area. Dave, I don't know where else we're on out there. San Bernardino, what? San Francisco. San Francisco. Los Angeles. Los Angeles. I can't remember. And. Uh, we need to go back on in Arizona. We're on in Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, and and uh, and Tulsa, and then we're on in. Uh, Dave knows all the cities. Santa Barbara, California. Santa Barbara, that's where the rich movie stars live. 
uh, gotten a couple of calls there, but it hadn't been from any movie stars. Uh, <laughs> saying, I want to repent of my sins. Uh, then we're on all over Texas, Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, Beaumont, San Antonio, Austin. And we get these letters from people and get emails. Of course, we're on the Internet all over the world 24 hours a day. And uh, these are some of the emails that people send. Uh, Rafael Rodriguez in Mexico. Good day. My name is Rafael Rodriguez, 54 years old. I live in Cancun, Mexico, and have seen your videos and they open my eyes in reference to dispensationalism I assist a fundamental Baptist church Woo! hard for me to breathe when I read that my father was a fundamental Baptist preacher uh, and boy they were proud of that premillennial fundamental and they had it on all their signs I assist a fundamental Baptist church which has Calvinist doctrine but preaches dispensationalism and they celebrate Christmas. Well, they're still messed up. I don't know if there are churches here in Cancun that preach like you, Scott. Is this for Scott? I don't know what you do to do because I don't think there are any here where they preach our millennial doctrine. We do not believe in a millennium after this is all over. I'm going to be touching some of that tonight. The Millenn the amillennialism is no millennium after this is over. The one thing that always bothered me, even as a teenager when my father would preach it, would be that Jesus had one foot on the land and one on the sea, and that is Jesus in Matthew 10, um, Revelation 10. One foot on the land, one on the sea, and says, Time is no more, oh, wait a minute, excuse me, except for a thousand years here. I never understood that. I think a thousand years is time, isn't it? think so anyway then he goes on to say do you think I should stay out of the church while I investigate more and continue assisting my church even though inside I reject this doctrine dispensationalism dispensationalism is one of the most dangerous doctrines in all uh, the church out here dispensationalism accepts what they call dispensation. I'm going to go ahead and say this right now. Dispensation is the word O-I-K-O-N-O-M-I-A. That's the word dispensation. Dispensation. Let me get another pen. That's not writing good. And it comes from the word oikos, O-I-K-O-S, and no most. Now, if you're not raised around dispensationalists, which I was, and I heard 500 messages on that at least, and my father preached it, they believe that time is divided up into sections. And you got many dispensationalist charts. I used to go into church and see those and go, I don't understand that. And you know what I do now when I see them? I don't understand that. I still. I still don't like it. It comes from oikos and nomos. And oikos means house or family. The Bible says Christ is a son over his own house. Whose house are we? We are the house of God. The house of God was the inner sanctuary in the temple because God dwelt between the cherubim and was married to Israel. And he dwelt between the cherubim. That means to marry or to be the husband of the wife so the house of God is here and it the ark of the covenant was sprinkled and our hearts are sprinkled and the law is written on on tables of stone that's written on fleshy tables of our heart that's why we're the house of God and the most is the Greek word law it meant the law of the house of God that's what oikonomia means and it's the common word dispensation, and it's also oikonomia is the same word stewardship. Stewardship. But the dispensationalists say, well, you had Adam living by innocence, and then you had Noah living 
uh, by the law, of, uh, by conscience, and then you had uh, Moses living by the law of God. That is ridiculous. That I hate that doctrine because it divides, and you get up here, and we're in the age of grace. We're in the age of grace, and uh, they were saved by, by innocence. And No, they weren't. Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared as, by faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet. It never rained before. And Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah is saved by grace through faith. No different than we are. And I hate this because it sets off the age of grace separate from this and separate from tribulation. Now, I can go all day long in that. I'll cover some of that tonight. I hate that doctrine. I believe it just it divides the Jew. It separates the Jew from Christianity. And that's why you got all these people like John Hagee preaching Jewish salvation. They don't have to accept Christ. They don't have to be born again. They don't have to. We don't believe in accept Christ. But even John Hagee believing that you have to accept Christ says the Jews don't have to do that. They're uh, God's people by God's choice. A Jew is not outwardly, but of the heart. Circumcision is of the heart. You're a spiritual Jew. Now, no, I wouldn't stand that church. I don't know what to tell people to do. I say, move here and join us or whatever. Uh, then he says, I don't know what to do. Do you think I should stand this church? No. Do you think one can be saved believing this heretical doctrine? Well, heretical is comes from the word. We get the word heretical from heresy. It means a sect, S-E-C-T, or denomination. Let me ask you this. Is everybody here, when you come here, have you already gotten hold of all these truths at once? No. Well, nobody gets hold of the truths all at once, and some preachers can keep people confused. I believe this is one of the most dangerous doctrines. I could never understood it when I was a kid. It's because it's not understandable. Uh, dispensation doesn't mean a period of time. It's the, we are the, the word steward is the word oikonomos, O-I-K-O-N-O-M-O-S. It's just a form of oikonomia. Oikonomia, O I K. O N O M I A. Say that real fast. Economia. Economy. It is our word economy. It's a person that takes care of the economy of the house of God, and we're God's house. You can't get around that any way you look at it. I would love to look at R. C. Sproul and say, You know this, and you're sitting there denying it. If you divide, if you define words, you get a lot of get a lot out of it. Uh, I'm not going to tell you who's saved and who's not saved, but I'll tell you this: God's elect know something is wrong when they're going to those churches. They know that. I knew my father was messed up, and I didn't want to admit it when I was a little kid. I just knew something was wrong. I had to grow up and study the Bible. Charles Stingler in Ohio, what do you think about the NKJV? Well, the New King James Version is okay to a point, but it doesn't have all of your study books. It's just putting other words in into a King James Bible that you cannot look up in your Strongs and Kittles or anything else. You have to Go over to the King James, see what the word is. If you're reading the New King James, I don't suggest anybody depart from the King James. It's not the King James Bible that is the inspired word of God. It's that, that book right back here. I took it back here to show it to a fellow. It's the interlinear Bible. It's the Greek text. Now, what I do is go in the Greek text. I don't really care what anybody else does. I believe America is a lost cause when it comes to studying the Word of God. Charles Tinker says, what do you think of NKJV? 
I guess it's all right to read. I don't want to read it because I want to remember what the King James says so I could go to my study books. If you're reading along and the King James puts a more modern word in there, the new King James, you can't look it up in your Strong's. You understand that? Or in your word study books. Uh, Pericles uh, Ajalala in Africa writes to us, Greetings. In Jesus' name, my name is Pericles Ajalala. I was raised in a Christian home. And my father, being a Baptist preacher and teacher, I grew up thinking I knew God and on my way to heaven. But only three years ago, after graduating from Bible college, I was confronted by a friend who showed me that I didn't know God. That is, when I came to truly understand the message of the gospel. I believe that's going on in a whole lot of Baptist churches that I was raised around. The Baptist, 150 years ago, did not celebrate Christmas... Easter, any of those Roman Catholic holidays, and they, most of them believed in predestination. Not hardly any of them do anymore. I then started a disciple training group where I teach the members how to efficiently preach the gospel without using shortcuts, and that's what people are doing, and expose the heresies that grew up I grew up with. Some months ago, I came across your website which was a great help, and I really thank God for all the good work you have done. I am from a French-speaking country of Africa, namely Benin, and I am still struggling in English. I listened to Sermon 3051 and inviting Jesus into, I would like to ask if I could have a copy, a PDF copy of that whole sermon. God bless you, Pericles Adajala in Africa. Greg Dick in Texas writes, I was watching you on Channel 99. I would like to program of 3594, please. My name is Greg Dick, and my address is. Thank you, and God bless. We love you, Greg. Give us, keep, give us a call. Uh, Daniel and Sarah uh, Blackman in Utah. Sarah's been a part of our church family for a long time, for years, 25 years, I guess. Dear Jim, how are you all doing? Just wanted to drop a line from out west and say hello. Please continue sending us DVDs. We sure love listening. Thank you all so much for all that you do. We're all doing about the same here, just working, studying, paying bills, and living quietly. A struggle every day, but God is good. Just trying to learn to thank Him every day for the struggles we live, we love, you church family, we love you, Jim and Mary. Agape and Phil, Daniel and Sarah Blackman, we love you guys. Tell mom hello. Um, Hodi B. Omasimua in Nigeria writes, Dear brother Jim Brown, I was greatly disappointed by your statement about the rendition of the hymn, The Old Rugged Cross, on one of your message videos. Yes, we are going to exchange our daily cross for a crown a personification for a reward in heaven. James 1 and 2. Several other crowns are promised in Revelation. No. Not crown. Stephanos. I didn't say this. This is in the original text. When, you, when Paul tells the Philippians, you are my joy and crown. He uses the word Stephanos. Every time you see it's used for us. A Stephanos, where you get the word Stephen or Stephanie, is, was an oak leaf that all the participants in the races received. We get one when we run the race. It's not the pointed crowns of Nimrod. When Nimrod went out and slew the great bull and it had, and he took pride in it, that's the crown of men. That's not the crown that Paul is talking about ever. This has to do with the horns of the bull, has to do with the picture we get of Satan running around with horns on his head. It's pride. That's what Babylon was founded on, self. I can't go any further than that. I'll stand up here all day preaching. All right. Uh, I'm not putting you down for this. You just don't understand the word is not crown. 
Stephanos. It was an oak leaf. I am a theologian. I am not a theologian or an owner of thousands of Bible study guides, commentaries, dictionaries, or reference books, but that hymn said it right. No, it didn't. Nope. The cross was a sign of Tammuz. It was a cursed cross. Stood for Tammuz, one of the sun gods in the ancient world. It wasn't a blessed thing. It was a blessed thing that Jesus died. But they took a cursed cross. That's what Galatians tells us. All right. Uh, then Jean Lavier writes to us from Houston. Heil was just reading a bet bestseller in KJV edition, of course. Uh, love, Genesis 48.2. Oh, as Jacob is called, both Jacob and Israel, in this one verse. I miss my interlinear Bible by grain, my 1828 Webster's Dictionary. If you'll go to an 1828 Webster's Dictionary and look up predestination, they'll tell you the truth. Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, there's, well, she lost all these when she lost her house. All lost to mold in her house. Uh, Leviticus 14 tells us how to meditate, remediate mold and repair your home. Amazing is it that everything I need to live a productive, godly life is available to me in one precious book. Uh, Irene Jean Lavier Houston. That, of course, that's the word peace. Uh, then this is from Phyllis Teal, Winnie, Texas. Hadn't heard from you in a while, Winnie. Uh, Phyllis, not Winnie. Phyllis, Winnie, Texas. Please add my name and address to your mailing list again. For the past two months, the DVDs have not arrived. With bills and trash mail arriving daily in my mailbox, Grace and Truth DVDs are the only reason to look forward to walk to the mailbox. Uh, thank you so much, Phyllis Teal, Winnie, Texas. And then Doug, Wendy, and Mary, and Rachel Pilot in New York. Just checking in, have been very busy and dealing with several rounds of stomach bug up here in the Northeast. I know about that. I think I've had that recently. All right, we love you guys. And then uh, read one more. Let me see here. Gordon Smith writes, On the young and restless in Israel. That's a message I did recently. God yields Ahab, Ahab, Athaliah marries Jehoram, and so forth. Uh, Hello, Jim. I'm so happy for you, and every time I listen to you, I learn so much and can share so much with other people. May God bless you and Mary and all the church family to keep on doing the good work that you are called to do the way to do the way you are, you explain stuff to to us. Nobody can fool us no more. I thank God for you because I'm learning. I just want to say thank God for you, Jim, and any kind, and to bless you with the joy of teaching. Thank you very much. I'll read the rest of these tonight. All right, I got a bunch more to read. And then I got letters, and I don't have time to get to the letters. I'm sorry. I say that every week. I don't know what else to do. I'll put these here. All right, put these over here. I've got some letters. I don't know. I'll just read some tonight. We're getting more emails and letters than I ever thought we could possibly get. I mean, we're getting lots. Our congregation is watching us on that camera right now, and they're all over the world. So just be, uh, be in prayer for the ministry. God will open up these opportunities everywhere. Uh, we are on TV every night in Nashville at 8.30 on Comcast, uh, 8.30 p.m. every night. And we're also, that's on Comcast Channel 49. We're also on Sunday morning uh, at 8.30. And we're on Saturday morning at 9 o'clock. If you live in Hendersonville, we're on Channel 3, Tuesday evening at 5 and Thursday night at 7. 
you would think we'd get a lot of calls, but we don't. But we have a lot of people watching because they, they let that sneak up in their conversation. Y'all see on TV, and that's all I get out of them. All right. We support our needy people. We've got a lot of needy folks. If you're going to be religious, that's one of the first things on the list, to take care of the downtrodden and the needy. And we've got a benevolent fund in the bank. We, we put all offerings in the benevolent fund. I write checks out to the needy as God deals with us. And, uh, but you have to be a part of the ministry. We have to know you. We have to know your beliefs. We don't just give to anybody. You have to be a proven believer before we'll help along the way. We, uh, we're we also still supporting Scott and Delilah. They are our missionaries to Ecuador, but they had to move back here because of a lot of situations, a lot of problems. They, they were uh, struggling with the government, with personal things. Uh, their kids weren't getting an education. It's a poor educational system down there. And uh, and that's them back there. That's them little girls right there. I'm pointing at you. <laughs> oh, there's the other one. I wonder where you were. You not like them? Do you not like them? Oh, that, that's Leo over there. And then you've got Abby and... Oh, <laughs> Rose is asleep. All right. All right, and if you send to the missionaries, just put make the check to grace and truth and put mission on the bottom. If you're sending to the needy, put... Ben Put needy on the bottom of the check. Uh, all right, we are. Uh, we are. We'll be having our picnic, and people will be coming from around the country uh, this year, every year in June. This year it'll be June the seventeenth. I hope I'm right. June the seventeenth, all day long down here at Rockland Recreation Center. Come and join the other people that believe these same truths. You can't come to grace and truth on a regular basis without believing that Christmas is pagan and Easter is pagan and God doesn't love everybody and predestination is true because we all believe that here, don't we? Check your head, yes. <laughs> Some people have moved here from long distances to be a part of it. And uh, uh, so come and join us uh, for our picnic. Our chili cookout will be October the 14th. And uh, come and join us. Bring your food with you. Uh, we are glad to have uh, Ron Johnson over here, the gray-headed fella. He said he was a Baptist deacon, didn't want me to hold that against him. <laughs> well, I was a Baptist preacher. He's been watching us on TV. He loves the message we t we teach, and uh, but we're glad to have you here. And uh, we pick at each other. We've got a bunch of ex-Catholics here. How many ex-Catholics we got? Goodness gracious, a whole bunch. <laughs> and then we got a bunch of ex-Pentecostals. How many ex-Pentecostals we got? Jim, you are Pentecostal. Yeah, sure you kind of Pentabaptist. Huh? Pentabaptist. He was a Baptist. Penta, Pentabaptist. I was a Pentabaptist. Oh, you were. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, anyway, we got a little bit of everybody here, don't we? Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer and uh, see somebody hadn't prayed for us in a while. Here comes old Joel in here. Uh, Jesse, you want to pray for us? Sure. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, 
Thank you for the time to be able to uh, hear your word and grow in your in our faith. Uh, God, uh, Brother Jim, to uh, give us the word that you want us to hear. Please be with those that are struggling to understand the word, that they be able to understand it and, and grow in the light. We, uh, we do love you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.